In this video, you will learn how to make your RESTful web service endpoint respond back with a specific HTTP status code if needed. For example, when we send HTTP a GET request to get user details, let me bring up this request. We got back HTTP status code 200 OK, which means that HTTP request was successful, there were no errors, and everything is OK. And almost most of the times you will rely on this HTTP status code, which is assigned to a response automatically by a web server. And it's not often that you need to send a different status code yourself, but there are still times and I'm going to show you how to do it. Let's go back to our REST controller. And let's say, for example, we have this get user method, which needs to return user details. And when we send HTTP get request to this method, we get HTTP status code 200, which means everything is okay. Now, to return a different HTTP status code, we can use response entity object, and I will need to import it first from org spring framework HTTP. And then instead of returning user rest, I'll need to return a response entity object. So I'll use new and then response entity. Now response entity can take a few parameters because there are different constructors. It can take body and HTTP status. It can take body headers and HTTP status and so on. So let's say we want to return HTTP status code. Uh, to do that, we'll need to use HTTP status and then put dot and choose one of the HTTP status codes here that are possible to return. I will choose OK, which means 200, everything was OK. And now I see underlining here, it says that the response entity is row references to generic type. OK, so to fix that, we will need to provide user rest here. And then we will need to provide user rest like this. So now we are returning response entity, but it doesn't have any body. It does return HTTP status code, but no body. And response entity has different constructors. So if I open its implementation and look it up, we can give it HTTP status, or we can give it body and HTTP status, or we can give it headers and status, or we can include body, headers, and the status. So uh, let's add body as well. So we want to return body and HTTP status like this. So now if we run this application, we should get back same user details and same HTTP status code. Okay. But let's say we want to return a different HTTP status code. And there are many of them. Uh, let me bring up a browser window here and I will Google for HTTP status codes. And the very first entry here is a list of HTTP status codes on Wikipedia. And if you scroll down, you'll see many of them, they're grouped into uh, groups like uh, 100, 101, 102, which are informational response, and then successful start status codes, redirection, and then errors. So depending on the functionality of your web service endpoint, you might want to return a different status code. For example, you might check for the required parameters. And then if you see that if something is not right, you can return HTTP status code 400, which is a bad request. Or if client authentication is needed, you can return 401, which is unauthorized. Or if an error takes place, uh, you can return HTTP status code 500, uh, which will mean that your server-side script has an issue and repeating this request will not resolve it. So let's assume that we checked our HTTP request and there was a missing piece of information and we want to return back a bad request. So what I will do, instead of selecting OK here, I will select bad request and I will not return return value here. So let me save this. And let me try this HTTP request now. So I will start up my application. Okay, it started. And I'll go back to my postman and send this HTTP request. Okay, so I don't get body because I did not include it into the response. And the HTTP status code now is bad request. Okay, so now you know how to set a different HTTP status code if needed. It's done with the response entity. And then you can create an object of response entity with different arguments and return back HTTP status code only or HTTP status code with a body and even include custom headers into your response if needed. Okay, so let's continue. 